Welcome to our latest video, which is part of a new series for GCSE Revision. This series of videos looks at tackling exam questions for key topics, and this first video is on the topic of bonding. By the end of this video lesson, you should have an improved understanding of how to illustrate the bonding in various compounds using dot and cross diagrams, and you should also be able to explain how the properties of substances are linked to their structure and bonding. So in this video, we're just going to look at how to tackle exam questions on the topic of bonding. So here's the first exam question, and it comes in two parts. So read for the question, pause the video, and have a go at the first part, and then we'll look at the second part of this question. So here's the second part of the first question. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers to both parts. Now in this first question, I'm asked to draw a bonding diagram for sodium oxide. Now sodium's a metal, oxygen's a non-metal, so we have ionic bonding here. So I'm going to draw a sodium atom, Na, and I'm going to put one cross to represent the one electron in the outer shell. And I'm going to draw an oxygen atom with six dots around it, representing the six electrons in the outer shell. Now elements bond together to gain full outer shells, which are stable arrangements. So sodium needs to lose one electron and oxygen needs to gain two. So you can see in this diagram, I've got two sodium atoms, both losing one electron. And these are getting transferred to the oxygen, which needs to gain two electrons. And the result is I form two Na plus ions and one O2 minus ion. So there's three marks for this question. So if you drew two sodium atoms losing one electron each, you get one mark. If you had an oxygen atom gaining two electrons, you get the second mark. And you get one mark if you drew the correct ions. So two Na plus ions and one O2 minus ion. Now in the second part of this question, I'm asked to draw a diagram to represent the bond in water. Well, water is H2O. It's made up of hydrogen and oxygen, both non-metals, so the bonding is covalent. And in covalent bonding, atoms share electrons to gain full outer shells. So I'm going to draw the oxygen atom first because there's only one oxygen and two hydrogens. So oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell. So I'm going to draw the six electrons here, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. That's the way I put them in. And if I do that, you can see I've got two unpaired electrons. Now I'm going to pair these up with hydrogen atoms. So you can see that the hydrogen and oxygen are sharing a pair of electrons here. And there are two shared pairs of electrons. And if you had the two shared pairs of electrons, you get one mark. And if you drew this diagram correctly, like I've drawn here, you can see that both oxygen and hydrogen have full outer shells. And if you've drawn that correctly with the oxygen and hydrogen both having full outer shells, you gain the second mark. So here's a second exam question for you to have a go at. And here's the first part of this question. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll look at the next part of this question. So here's the next part of this question. So once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we go for the answers to part A and part B. So the first part of this question is asking me to draw a bonded diagram for lithium sulfide. While well, lithium's a metal, sulfur's a non-metal, so it has ionic bonding. So I'm gonna draw the lithium atom first, and it's got one electron, it's out of shell. So I'm gonna show this with a cross. And sulfur's got six electrons in its outer shell, so I'm going to represent these with dots. Now, lithium needs to lose one electron, sulfur needs to gain two, so I have to draw two lithium atoms here, and both lithium atoms are going to lose one electron with the electrons being transferred to the sulfur. The sulfur's going to gain the two electrons, so this is going to result in the formation of two Li plus ions and one S2 minus ion. Now this is a three mark question. So if you had two lithium atoms losing one electron and these being transferred to the sulfur, you get one mark. And if you had a sulfur gaining two electrons, you get the second mark. And if you had the correct ions, two Li plus and one S2 minus ion, you get the third mark. 
Now in the second part of this question we're shown the melting points for sodium chloride and magnesium oxide and we can see that magnesium oxide has a much higher melting point and we're asked to explain the difference in the melting points of the two compounds. Well this comes down to the charges of the ions. Sodium chloride is made up of Na plus ions and Cl minus ions and magnesium oxide is made up of Mg2 plus and O2 minus ions. Now there's a greater charge on the magnesium and oxide ions compared to the sodium and chloride ions. You can see that magnesium has a 2 plus charge, oxide has a 2 minus charge, and this is compared to the 1 plus charge for sodium and the 1 minus charge for chloride. Now the result of this is that there's stronger attraction between the ions, which means that there's stronger ionic bonding, there's stronger attraction in the lattice. Remember, ions are held in a giant structure called a lattice. So there's stronger attraction between the ions, stronger ionic bonds, in other words. And this means more energy is needed to break the ionic bonds. That results in magnesium oxide having a higher melting point. So if you said there's greater charge on the magnesium and oxide ions compared to sodium and chloride ions, you get one mark. And if you then said that this results in stronger attraction between the ions, in other words, stronger ionic bonds, or you said there's more energy needed to break the ionic bonds because of this stronger attraction, you get the second mark. So here's our last practice question, and this comes in three parts, part A, part B, and part C. And part A is on this slide. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at part A, and then we'll show you parts B and C. So here's parts B and C. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers to part A, part B, and part C. Now the first part of this question shows a diagram showing the transfer of electrons that takes place during the formation of magnesium chloride. Well, any bonding that involves a transfer of electrons between a metal and a non-metal is ionic bonding. So one mark if you said ionic bonding is the type of bonding present. And then it says state given a reason what must be done to magnesium chloride so they can conduct electricity. Well, you need to melt it or dissolve it in water. One mark if you said that. And that's because the ions need to be free to move for it to conduct electricity. So if you said this allows the ions to be free to move, you get the second mark. So for part B, you have to draw a bonding diagram for carbon dioxide. Now carbon and oxygen are non-metals, so carbon dioxide has covalent bonding. And you have to remember for carbon dioxide that there are two double bonds. Now a double bond is where it shares two pairs of electrons. So I'm going to draw the carbon and two oxygen atoms here. And I'm going to put in the two double bonds. So you can see that there are two pairs of electrons being shared here. So I've got a cross dot cross dot to represent the two pairs of electrons. And there's another double bond here. So again, two pairs of electrons are being shared. Now, if the crosses represent carbon's electrons and the dots represent oxygen's electrons, you can see that there are no more electrons to put in for carbon because carbon only has four electrons in the outer shell. Now each oxygen needs to have six electrons in the outer shell, so I need to put in an extra four electrons here, represented by dots. And you get one mark if you had the two double bonds correct, and you get the second mark if the oxygens and the carbons all have full outer shells. So for part C, it says carbon dioxide and diamond both contain covalent bonds. And it's asking you to give the names of the different structure types and explain why diamond has a higher melting point than carbon dioxide. And this is a three mark question. So carbon dioxide has a simple covalent structure. In other words, it's made up of simple covalent molecules. And diamond has a giant covalent structure. So if you had the correct structures, you get one mark. Now carbon dioxide is made up of simple covalent molecules and it has weak forces between the molecules. So if you said that, you get one mark. And if you said that diamond has a giant structure with strong covalent bonds in all directions, 
you get a mark for that. So you get one mark for the correct structures, one mark for saying that carbon dioxide has weak forces between the molecules, and one mark for saying that there are strong bonds in all directions in diamond. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you now have an improved understanding of how to illustrate the bonding in various compounds using dot and cross diagrams, and you should also be able to explain how the properties of substances are linked to their structure and bonding. That concludes our video. Thank you for watching. This and other GCSE, AS and A-level chemistry videos can be found in our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry.